Propagating plants is an inexpensive and easy way to get new plants from plants you already have. The two major methods of plant propagation are sexual and asexual propagation. Sexual propagation is the reproduction of plants via seeds. Asexual propagation is the reproduction of new plants from the stems, leaves, or roots taken from the parent plant. One of the most important benefits of asexual propagation is that plants produced by this method are genetically identical to the parent. A plant that is grown from a piece of another plant and is genetically identical to the parent plant is known as a clone. Trees and woody perennials are typically propagated by means of asexual propagation to preserve the genotype clonally and reduce breeding time. I'm Dr. DeBusk and in this video I'll focus on asexual plant propagation. Asexual propagation has a number of advantages and disadvantages. Therefore, when deciding on the most efficient propagation technique to use, you should look at both the pros and cons. The number one advantage is that plants produced are genetically identical to the parent plant, which means heterozygous material can be propagated without any genetic modifications. Other advantages associated with asexual propagation are that plants are established more quickly, they are more uniform, it is sometimes the only means of propagation, for example seedless fruits such as grapes, and seed-borne diseases are not a problem. The number one disadvantage is that typically producing plants vegetatively is more expensive than using seeds. A second problem occurs when plant material becomes infected with a virus that spreads systemically throughout the plant, and thus can be transmitted to other plants. Viral infections can be minimized or eliminated by starting with disease-free seedlings and maintaining virus-free stock plants for asexual propagation. Other disadvantages associated with asexual propagation are difficulty with storage, handling, and transport of asexual materials, which are more cumbersome to handle than seeds. A variety of types of asexual propagation can be used. Apomixis is a form of asexual propagation in which seeds are produced without fertilization. For example, there is no fusion of the male and female gametes, so these seeds are solely maternal in origin. An excellent example of this type of asexual propagation is the common dandelion found in most lawns. It is capable of reproducing by seeds, vegetatively, or by apomixis. Cuttings, the most common type of asexual propagation, refer to using a detached vegetative part to produce a new plant. The four types of cuttings are stem, leaf, leaf bud, and root cuttings. Stem cuttings use portions of the stem containing terminal or lateral buds. Stem cuttings can be made from herbaceous or softwood tissues that are not lignified, semi-hardwood tissues that contain lignified tissue, deciduous hardwood, mature woody stems, and conifer cuttings, tissues that are hardwood obtained from conifer plants in early winter. Examples of plants produced by the different types of cutting material include the following. Softwood or herbaceous stems from forsythia, lilac, geranium, or carnation, semi-hardwood from azalea, holly, or rhododendron, deciduous hardwood from hardwood trees, and conifer stems from juniper, hemlock, or pine. Leaf cuttings consist of a portion of a leaf blade, a complete leaf blade, or a leaf blade with the petiole attached. Leaf cuttings are typically used when plant materials are scarce and when large numbers of plants are needed. The following are examples of popular species propagated by leaf cuttings. Sansevera, Snake plant is very easy to propagate, but the cutting must be placed in the same orientation as found on the plant. African violets are also easily propagated by detaching the leaf from the plant, inserting the leaf into the soil, and sealing the container with the cutting in a clear plastic bag. New roots and shoots will emerge from the base of the petiole. Rex bogonians can easily be propagated by detaching the leaf, making small cuts on several veins, and pinning the leaf to the soil to assure that the leaf stays in contact with it. The container with the cutting is sealed in a clear plastic bag to hold in moisture. Plants will form roots at the cuts on each vein. Leaf bud cuttings consist of a leaf, petiole, and a short piece of stem with a lateral bud. This type of propagation is very important when woody plant material is scarce and a large number of new plants are required. Leaf bud cuttings are taken from plants with fully developed buds and actively growing leaves. Typically as an is the case with most hardwood cuttings, leaf bug cuttings must be treated with a rooting hormone prior to placement in the rooting medium. The lateral bud should not be completely covered because the bud will remain too moist and rot. To ensure success of rooting, the cuttings should also be placed under high humidity and be supplied with bottom heat. Examples of popular species that are propagated by leaf bug cuttings are rhododendron, magnolia, camellia, and maple. Root cuttings are root pieces taken from young plants as a source of material. 
Roots are dug in the winter or early spring, cleaned, cut three to six inches in length, and treated with a fungicide. Root cuttings are typically planted horizontally, approximately two inches deep. Although the regeneration of plants from root cuttings takes place in different ways, typically the adventitious shoot is produced following the production of roots at the base of the newly formed shoot. Raspberries are commonly propagated using root cuttings. Root cuttings are not commonly done for most types of plants because root cutting is labor intensive and the plant produced can be different from the parent plant. To ensure optimal rooting of cuttings, start with a high quality parent plant. Treatment of cuttings with the plant hormone auxin is used to initiate rooting. Rooting hormone can come as a solution or powder. The most common method immerses the basal end of the cutting approximately one inch into the hormone, then plant it. Although auxins are not effective in all plant species, there are several different benefits. A higher percentage of the cuttings produce roots. Root initiation is quicker in most cases, the number and quality of roots per cutting is increased, and uniformity of rooting along the length of the cutting is increased. To be successful when attempting to root cuttings, five factors should be taken into consideration. The parent plant used for cutting production must be grown under optimal cultural and environmental conditions. When parent plants are well nourished and growing vigorously, they generally produce high quality cuttings. The time of the year and the time of the day to harvest cuttings are very important. Cuttings from herbaceous plants can be taken any time of the year, whereas hardwood cuttings typically root better when materials are collected during the late winter when cuttings are dormant. Softwood and semi-hardwood cuttings taken from deciduous plants should be taken in the spring and midsummer respectively. Cuttings should always be harvested during the early morning when plants are turgid. Some plants are easy to root, whereas others are very difficult to root. The plants that are easy to root typically require little or no special treatment. Herbaceous plants are generally easy to root. Difficult to root plants, which are typically woody, require that the bark be scraped off at the base of the cutting. Both easy to root and difficult to root cuttings are typically treated with auxins to simulate rooting. After the cutting is taken from the parent plant and properly prepared, the root inducing environment must be optimized to maximize rooting. Cuttings do not have roots, so they cannot readily absorb moisture from the growing medium. To prevent moisture loss from the cutting, maintain a relatively high humidity around the cuttings by misting them. Immediately after sticking the cutting, misting is required frequently. As time goes on, the frequency is reduced until finally misting is no longer needed. To induce faster rooting, the use of bottom heat is very effective. The temperature used for bottom heat should be about 10 degrees Fahrenheit above the ambient air temperature, which is typically maintained between 65 and 75 degrees Fahrenheit. By supplying bottom heat, rooting occurs faster than shoot growth, thereby producing a healthy rooted cutting. Many species root very easily and can root in water alone. Coleus is an excellent example. Most plants, however, require a high quality rooting medium for cuttings to root efficiently. Sand, perlite, peat moss, and vermiculite can be used alone or in various combinations. Fertilization should occur after the roots have emerged from cuttings. In fact, fertilization prior to root emergence can actually inhibit or delay the rooting process. The proper time to transplant cuttings differs with the plant species used. However, a general rule of thumb is when an adequate amount of root mass has formed to support plant growth. When transplanting cuttings, carefully remove them from the rooting bed or container and plant no deeper than they were originally planted. Grafting is the process of connecting two plants or plant parts so that they will unite and continue to grow as one plant. For the grafting process, one of the two plants being grafted must serve as the understock, which is the bottom part of the graft union that is in contact with the soil. The other component of the graft is the scion, which is a short piece of stem with one or two buds. For grafting to be successful, the scion and understock must be compatible and the cambium layers must be in close contact with the scion and understock. Additional factors is that the understock must be equal to or larger than the scion's di diameter and it must be done at the proper time of year so that the scion buds are dormant but can still produce callus tissue. Immediately after grafting, all cut surfaces must be thoroughly covered with grafting wax, which is a water repellent material composed of beeswax, resin, and tallow to prevent desiccation. Grafting can be used to maintain clones that cannot be propagated by other asexual methods, to gain benefits of certain rootstocks, for example, disease resistant and dwarfing rootstocks are currently used, to speed up the time to maturity to promote earlier fruit production, 
and to repair damaged parts of trees. Grafting can be classified according to the part of the rootstock on which the scion is placed, such as a root or various places on the top of the plant. The three major categories of grafts are detached scion, approach, and repair grafting. Detached scion grafting involves inserting a detached scion into the apex side bark or root of the understock. Detached scion methods include apical side bark and root grafting. There are six types of apical grafting. The whip and tongue, splice and saddle are used when the scion and stock are approximately equal in size. The cleft and wedge are used when the scion is smaller than the stock. Side grafts place the scion on the side of the rootstock. Side grafting is usually performed at the bench with the rootstock potted and just coming out of dormancy and the scion is dormant. There are three types of side grafting, side stub, side tongue, and side veneer. Side veneer grafting is the most popular way to graft conifers, especially those having a compact or dwarf form. The bark graft and the inlay bark graft are types of grafts used for top working established plants. Top working is a technique used in fruit orchards for changing cultivars without having to plant new trees. The scions are inserted into the slot made by the removal of the bark. The end of the scion is slipped under the raised flap of bark. Two nails are driven through the scion, one going through the flap. Root grafting, also called whole root or piece root grafting, uses only a root piece as the rootstock compared to other types of grafts where the rootstock contains both root and stem tissue. At one time, this was a common graft for apples. Root grafting is done as bench grafting when the scion is dormant. They are commonly tied with nursery tape that decomposes naturally when the graft is planted in the soil. Approach grafting is unique because both the rootstock and scion remain attached to the root systems during the grafting process. The scion is usually in a container which is brought to the rootstock. This grafting is done while both partners are actively growing. It is a graft used when the scion is unique and the propagator does not want to remove it from the stock plant. It is also used when standard grafts have not been successful. This type of grafting can be broken down into three categories, spliced approach, tongued approach, and inlay approach. Repair grafts are used to correct damage done to established trees. The two most common repair grafts are bridge grafting and inarching. These differ because in, ar in arching, the rootstock has its own root system. In bridge grafting, a scion is inserted around the injured section and attached at both the upper and lower ends of live undamaged bark. Budding is similar to grafting except that the scion is reduced to a single bud with a small portion of bark or wood attached. Budding methods are typically done in the spring or fall when the bark slips, which means that the bark separates easily from the wood. Xylem and cambium cells are actively dividing. The three main types of budding are chip budding, tea budding, and patch budding. Layering is a simple method of asexual propagation in which roots are formed on the stem while still attached to the parent plant. Layering occurs naturally in some species. A good example is the strawberry plant. There are five types of layering commonly used in horticulture. Simple layering occurs when the stem of the plant is gently curved, nicked at the bend, placed in a shallow hole, and the terminal end of the shoot being buried is left exposed. A new plant is formed at the location where the nick was made. Serpentine layering occurs when the stem of the plant is generally curved at several locations. Trench layering occurs when the middle portion of a flexible stem is buried in the ground after nicking it at several locations. Mound layering occurs when the parent plant is first cut back slightly above ground level in late winter and covered with soil. The pruning causes new shoot growth to occur in the spring. After this growth occurs in the spring, soil is mounted around the base of the shoot. As the shoot grows, the additional soil is placed around the shoot and roots then develop around the base of the shoot. Air layering involves removing a portion of the bark on the stem, placing moist material such as sphagnum moss around this wounded site, wrapping with clear plastic and sealing both ends to hold in moisture. Camellias are commonly propagated using this method. Separation occurs when a natural structure is removed from the parent plant and grows on its own. Examples are bulbs, tulips or lilies, or corms, gladiolus or crocus. Division relies on cutting plant parts into sections as a means of propagation. Examples are rhizomes, like iris, or tubers, like Irish potatoes. 
Tissue culture is a method for producing new plants from single cells, tissue, or pieces of plant material called explants on artificial medium under sterile conditions. Some commonly used methods of tissue culture are as follows. Callus culture is the use of callus, which is the undifferentiated mass of cells that can be induced naturally by wounding or artificially by using plant hormones as a means of growing plants or different plant parts on a solid medium. Cell suspension culture is a method in which plant cells are suspended in a liquid media under continuous agitation to provide aeration. Suspension cultures are initiated by placing callus in a liquid medium and agitating to aerate and to disperse the cells. Embryo culture, also called embryo rescue, occurs when the embryo is removed from the seed aseptically and grown in a solid gel medium under optimal environmental, nutritional, and hormonal conditions to promote growth of the embryo which would not germinate within the seed. Meristem culture is a technique that uses the smallest part of the shoot tip as an explant, which includes the meristem dome and some leaf primordia. The meristem is a region of the plant consisting of undifferentiated tissue whose cells can divide and differentiate to form specialized tissues. In conclusion, asexual propagation is commonly used when sexual propagation is not an option. There are nine commonly used types of asexual propagation and it depends on the plant on which technique is best.